Okay. She said, yes, that's nice. Good morning, everybody. Uh, we're live on Facebook from Glencliff United Methodist Church, and I am Reverend Neely Hicks, and I want to wish those of you celebrating Pride Festivals here in the U.S. and possibly around the world a very joyous day. I am really happy also to um, share with you that we've had some special birthdays this last week and we're looking forward to celebrating all of our July birthdays soon. For each of you who celebrated a birthday, for each of you who celebrated the birth of someone else in your life that might have passed away, I pray that you feel their presence with you and that you feel the love of God, which we can never be separated from. Amen. So I'm going to go ahead and um, go into the message for today. And um, we are going to um, focus on the thought of freedom and what it means. So um, not the freedom that's given by a man-made law, but the kind of freedom that is within each one of us, the kind of freedom that really moves through us and helps us express the love that is innate within us. That's where true freedom is. And we see that through expressions like affection for others, exuberance about life, and serenity. So today I want to share a reading from a letter. It was a letter um, that was written around 50 AD, and it talks about the meaning of freedom. It was sent to a group of early believers in Jesus as the Messiah, as the Christ, the ones who were first believing that Jesus was sent by God. And this letter was written to a group of people in a place called Galatia, um, which in modern times we call this whole country Turkey, the country of Turkey. Um, so the letter was countering some of the rules that were um, being enforced by various religions, um, which required men to be circumcised and there were other forms of laws that were also restricting the personal liberties and even imprisoning these early believers in Jesus as the Christ. So this letter um, from the book of Galatians in what we call the New Testament in the Bible says, Christ has set us free to live a free life. So take your stand. Never again let anyone put a harness of slavery upon you. It is absolutely clear that God has called you to a free life. Use your freedom to serve one another in love. That's how freedom grows. For everything we know about God's word is summed up in a single sentence. Okay, so get that. Everything we know about God's word is summed up in a single sentence. Love others as you love yourself. That is an act of true freedom. So that is taken from the Bible, um, the book of Galatians, chapter 5, verse 1, and from 13 to 25. So I'm using the message version. So we are moving towards the 4th of July here in the United States, a day that marks freedom from this land being considered part of Great Britain rather than being its own country, America, as they called it. The people who left Great Britain each had their own desires. Some wanted to live in a puritanical place a place with lots of rules about how to live so to please God, how to live to be that light on the hill. That was some of their initial thoughts about coming here and breaking away from Great Britain. Others wanted to find physical wealth, but instead of working themselves to the bone, 
they enslaved people from other countries to do it for them. The founder of Methodism, John Wesley, said, in any case, how dare Americans speak of liberty with 10,000 Negroes in the American colonies enslaved? I'm going to read that again. The founder of Methodism, John Wesley, who was living in the 1700s at the time that America was being formed as its own nation, wrote, in any case, how dare Americans speak of liberty with 10,000 Negroes in the American colonies enslaved. The thing is, human beings are faulty. Each of us has different views on how to express freedom in the world around us. Some have made laws that objectify women's bodies, limiting the freedom to make conscientious decisions in the privacy of a doctor's office. Some of them even want to take away family planning options of birth control. Some want to limit the freedom of choosing the person you commit your life to, whether they are of the same sex or even someone of a different ethnicity. These things are at risk in our country. Some want to have classrooms with only white children, while children of color would have, se would have a separate system of education altogether. This too is at jeopardy in the United States. Some want to overturn Brown versus the Board of Education. And if that happens, segregation will come back into full swing in our country. As I said, human beings are faulty. Some of you might want to use harsher words, and that's okay too. These people do not want to simply rule their life with conscientious decisions. They want to make the laws on how others will live, often while they do the same things they have legislated against. This is hypocrisy, and it's a truly lazy way of following Jesus. It's just lazy. When we love one another as ourselves, we put who the other person is as a priority, not judging them, but loving them. You know, in the Bible, it says that um, judge not lest you be judged. Um, but it's so funny how people take that rule and they twist it. And then they start judging one another before they ever love one another, which as today's scripture talks about, that is what everything hangs upon is loving God with heart, soul, mind, and strength and loving our neighbor as ourselves. It's about love. You know, when we love our neighbor, we show personal expressions of care and compassion, often providing food, water, clothing, visiting the sick and the imprisoned, caring for the widows and the motherless children, not judging these people, but loving them through outward expressions of love, not in some faraway sentiment, but in a powerful way that is physically present with those who are in need of care, a physical presence that in a way is like, it's an expression of God in the world today. It's like God with skin on. We get to live the love that God shows us to others. Jesus said, for I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you invited me in. I needed clothes and you clothed me. I was sick and you looked after me. I was in prison and you came to call me. And Jesus also provided a warning that we who do not do these things while here on earth will be punished. 
we will be punished because we've not seen Jesus truly in one another, caring for God's own expression of love right before us. Those who broke away from Great Britain didn't want to have their own faith legislated. They wanted to freely express and choose how to worship God, but the generations that followed them are now wanting to do the very thing that they left Great Britain for, is the right to freely worship God and to freely and conscientiously choose this, not through legislation, but that it would be a law that could be written on the heart not made by man. Now we are being overcome by new laws, new legislations that sometimes, especially for the unborn, only guarantee, our laws only guarantee one thing to a newborn child, the right to buy an assault weapon. The fault lies in thinking that one person will be holier than another if they make laws by any means possible. But the gospel shares that holiness, true holiness, comes from loving one another into being full expressions of love, who is God. We cannot get there by legislation. We can recognize the Holy Spirit within us when we see ourselves acting with compassion and care, love, and joy, peace, and understanding. Today, look for these qualities within yourselves. How will each of us act upon these qualities in the hurting world around us? Go to the places where people are hurting and simply be present with them, not judging them, not preaching at them, evoking love out of yourself, and out of the other person. That's the true power, witnessing the love of God in the world, not by talking about it with empty words, but by showing it through great expressions of love. This is the bread of heaven. Offer it to yourself and to one another. Amen. So, in conclusion, I want to invite you to join us on Zoom, where we will share prayer concerns and joys from the past week and things that we're looking forward to in the week ahead. We'll talk a bit more about this passage, and we will just share the love of God with each other and love one another into being. So I do hope that you join us on Zoom. Um, you can get there through um, bit.ly, B-I-T dot L-Y slash capital G-U-M-C capital Z Zoom. So it's G-U-M-C Zoom. Okay. And I'll try to put a link there in just a minute when, when the live stream finishes. For today, I want you to also remember that when we are not constrained, when we are not bound by money, when we put God first rather than money first, something miraculous happens. And so it's in that spirit that I also invite you to give to this community of people who really believe that it's all about love. It's all about sharing love with each other, rejoicing in the love that's found no matter how or where it's coming from but just rejoicing and finding Jesus in one another because it's there. And that's our community is one that is open and accepting of all people from all walks of life. Whether you live on the streets and we're hoping to find you a home, whether you're living in the village at Glencliff and you're suffering from physical issues and pain, whether you're coming to us um, in, you know, whatever way, we want you to know that we simply want to be with you and we want to love each other until the fullness of God's love is found throughout the world. Amen. Oh, and you can give 
through our Facebook donate page, okay? So you can do that, or you can go to glencliffumc.org slash donate and give there. We welcome the gifts because we are a very small community doing some really big things. And so money is a great expression of love for us and for what we're doing. Thank you so much for being with us today. I pray that you have a blessed day. And if you have prayer concerns, um, just type them in the chat below. God bless you.